If you've ever rolled up to a stop sign, taken a quick look around, and if no cars were coming, hit the gas, and kept on going, then you have normalized deviance. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up and click the subscribe button too. In this video, I'm going to explain the low altitude airshow roll and how normalization of deviance can make you crash. Take a look at this clip. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Before I do the play-by-play -play on that maneuver, let's get into something that is the enemy of safety in almost everything humans do, whether it's airshow flying, driving a car, cooking dinner, practicing medicine, or any activity with risk. Normalization of deviance is a phenomenon that occurs when people and organizations become comfortable Jesus. Oh Lord, Jesus, Listen, we're level, we can maintain altitude like this. Every time you accept a behavior that deviates from the current norm, your standards shift farther away from the starting point until disaster happens. One of the most notable examples ever documented of normalization of deviance was the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger on January 28, 1986. The cause of the explosion was linked to faulty design of the O-ring joints that had sealed the solid rocket boosters and was exacerbated that morning by operating the rocket in temperatures that were lower than allowed. Engineers knew this was a problem long before that fateful day. However, they decided to continue flying the space shuttle fleet and accept the design flaw. This was a flagrant violation of NASA regulations. The fact is NASA got away with it until they didn't on that cold January day. This is normalization of deviance. It's why you keep running stop signs and why airshow flying is so dangerous for pilots who lack the discipline to set standards and respect them. Which brings us to rolling an airplane close to the ground and why this basic aerobatic maneuver has proven fatal to so many pilots and right in front of the crowd. There are many kinds of rolls that can be performed, but the one I'm talking about here is consecutive slow rolls. This is the type of roll often seen at air shows flown on a horizontal line parallel to the crowd. The plane maintains altitude and heading and is rolled as fast as can be with full aileron deflection. It's harder than it sounds because you have to work with the rudder and elevator throughout the maneuver to keep the nose from dropping. If it does drop while doing multiple consecutive rolls, it means the pilot has lost situational awareness in the maneuver. So it's better at that point to stop rolling, level the wings, and climb back up. Now, if you just bang in the ailerons, the plane will roll, but the nose will drop each time, causing altitude loss, which trends lower with each roll. When done properly, the nose stays slightly higher than the roll axis, where there will be no altitude loss while rolling. Here's a look at one of my students in the front seat of my pits learning to perform this maneuver at a safe altitude. Keep a close eye on the altimeter at the upper left side of the instrument panel. By the time the plane is inverted, it has already lost 100 feet. Then at the end of the roll, it's 300 feet lower than where it started. Now take a look at this video of me doing one at 100 feet above the ground. You cannot consider yourself proficient at this maneuver until it can be performed without losing any altitude and staying on heading. Accepting anything less than this level of performance at an air show would be a normalization of deviance. Now let's look at a double roll from an air show where I was performing a racetrack squirrel cage with another pilot. We took off together then separated so that while one of us was over the runway, the other was on downwind. Then we went around in circles. At this air show, the organizer is risk adverse and prefers we not get too close to the ground and ask us to stay above 200 feet. Let's go through the video in real time to see the maneuver as I see it. Then I'll break it down on the slow motion play by play. As I complete my turn towards the show line, which is the edge of the runway closer to the crowd on the right, just about all at once, I add power, pull back on the stick to stop the descent at 200 feet, check my alignment with a quick wing drop and get ready to roll, taking a quick look over the nose for a sight picture to roll the nose around. As I approach the crowd, the stick goes full left, I tap left rudder, then start coming in with right rudder as I approach the knife edge. Rolling through knife edge, I'm coming off the right rudder as I squeeze the stick forward approaching inverted. Rolling through inverted, I'm relaxing the forward stick pressure as I start coming in with left rudder to keep the nose up as I roll through knife edge again. After passing knife edge, I'm coming off the rudder and finishing the roll to upright. Then repeat for the second roll. 
And that was the slow roll. The takeaway here is that you have to set your limits and respect them. Even if you're not an airshow pilot, that doesn't mean you should give yourself the leeway to fly without precision. Just because you haven't been caught running a stop sign or had an accident doesn't mean you can get away with it forever. See you next time.